folk. I must tell you what we did last night. Last night, as a family, we went to watch a film. It was a wonderful film about Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck and the Goofy Dog. And, oh, it was just fantastic. But we had a horrible time or a horrible experience. And the horrible experience came was when we got to the movie house. And the tickets we bought were blank tickets. In other words, there were no seat numbers on those tickets. Now, normally when you go to a movie house, you buy your tickets and they show you a plan of the actual cinema. And they tell you or show you and say, these seats are available. Where would you like to sit? You choose your seat numbers. And when you walk into the cinema, those seats are your seats. They reserved for you. Last night, though, we didn't have that experience. We just walked in the cinema and anyone could sit where anybody wanted to sit. The problem with that is this. If you are late for the movie or, or not the first bunch of people to walk in, there are not many seats available. And what makes it worse for us last night as a family of three was we couldn't find three seats together at all. So I sat in the middle of the cinema. My son sat towards the front of the cinema and my wife sat at the back of the cinema. Absolutely horrific. I prefer going to a movie where you get your seat numbers and you get your seat numbers from looking at a plan of the cinema. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to look at different sorts of plans. Let's have a look here. So the plans that we are going to look at today, and there are three are three are types, seating plans, shopping malls, and housing plans. So let's get going and look at our first example. Example one, a seating plan is a diagram or a set of written or spoken instructions that determines where people should take their seat. I like this. It's a diagram. Let's have a look here. Here is a diagram of a seating plan in a movie house. You can see where the screen is. It's right over here. And so you can look at the cinema now and say, well, where would we like to sit? Okay. And I know all the teenagers like to sit towards the back row. Okay. Why? I have no idea why, but they do. All right. And then the older folk like the middle. Okay. And the blind people like the very front. Right. So we look at the cinema plan and we say, right, I'm going to buy a ticket. There are three of us in our family. I reckon we're going to sit in those three seats over there. Or if you like me and your bladder is very small and you've got to run to the toilet every 20 minutes, we're going to take these three seats. So I'm on the end and I can dash out every now and then. All right. Now, let's have a look at the type of questions you could be asked honestly seating plan like this and folk i want to stress this normally and i'm saying normally this kind of question would come into a paper one why because the questions or the answers to questions are found straight off the diagram let me show you question one how many seats are there in each row and the second question how many rows of seats are there so how many seats are in each row well, let's have a look at that. Now, we have columns and we have rows. This is a row. This is a column. Okay. So how many seats in each row? Well, there are two ways of figuring that out. Number one, we know that this seat on the end is called A1 and this seat on the end, this end is called A16. So one would presume there are 16 seats from one all the way through to 16. Double check, let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 seats. Okay, straightforward. That's why I say this is like paper one, because there's nothing really complicated about it. Our second question was, how many rows of seats are there? Well, when we look here, we can see that we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 rows. Okay, A to L is going to be 11. 
A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, J, K, L. Now, I want us to look at something important here. When we look at rows, you will notice they've left out a letter. And the letter they've left out is the letter I. Why have they left the letter I out? Because when you write an I, an I could be written like that. And that could symbolize a one or an I. Okay, other things you might find interesting about seating arrangements, for example, in an aeroplane, if you go onto a website and you look, type in seating plans on a plane, you will get a whole lot of various seating planes. Now, here's a very, very interesting fact. A lot of airlines don't have row number 13. So when you count the rows, you'll count 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16. That row 13 is left out. Well, actually, it's not really left out. They just don't number it as number 13. And the reason why they don't do that is because there is, some people are very superstitious and believe 13 is unlucky. And so no passengers, or well, very few passengers, want to sit in row number 13. Okay? And that's why a lot of airlines won't have that row 13. I promise you it's true. Go and Google that. Okay? Look at different uh, airline um, seating plans and see how many different airlines don't have a row 13. It's really, really amazing. Okay, my next question is this. Number the seats that are covered with a square. So let's have a look at the seats. I've got a number of them. I've got this one over here, this one over there, and this seat. Now, what is this seat? Well, we know that it's row L, and it's one, two, three, four. So it's seat L4. This seat over here, we know it's row E, and let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's seat E9. And this final seat over here we know is row B, and it's going to probably be 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Row or seat B15. Easy, isn't it? Of course it is. Now let's have a look at a different type of plan. A shopping mall, for example. Consider the plan of a lower ground uh, floor of a particular shopping mall. Okay, so here we have a shopping mall. You can see the shops all lay, uh, numbered. Uh, for example, this shop over here is called LGF20. This shop over here is called LGF9. Okay, what does LGF actually stand for? Why don't they just number this uh, room uh, or uh, shop 20 and shop 9? Why is it LGF 20 and LGF 9? I think the answer is here in the question. Consider the plan of the lower ground floor of a particular shopping mall. So LGF tells me, not only am I looking for shop number three, but it's on the lower ground floor, okay? If it was the middle ground floor or the first ground floor, it might be 1GF or MGF03. So the naming of the actual particular shop is also giving me an idea of where that shop is located. Now let's have a look at some of these questions. What do you think LGF stands for, folk? We've just answered that. Between what shop numbers do the lifts lie? So first of all, we've got to find the lifts. Where are these lifts? Right, so here it says a lift lobby. So I presume that's the lift. Between what shops do they lie? They lie between shop LGF6 and LGF7. Okay, so if you can find one of these shops, Voila, you're going to find the lifts very easily. Right, what are the largest shops on this floor? And then as well, we're going to ask, do you think these shops are numbered in a user-friendly manner? Okay, so what are the largest shops on this floor? Looking at it, I would say the largest ones uh, seem to be LGF3 and LGF1. Okay, and then... Number, um, are, do you think 
that these shops are numbered in a user-friendly way. In other words, if you were looking for shop 18, where would you go find it? If you were looking for shop 14, where would you go find it? Now, I must admit, when I look at this plan, I don't know if this is really user-friendly. Let me explain why I say this, okay? If you look here, if I'm over here and I'm looking, let's say, for uh, shop number 12, okay? Um, I would have to go right here, shop 1, thinking this could be shop 2 and it's not, it's shop 20. Here, shop 2, here, shop 3. So if we were looking for shop 19, and I was at shop five, I would keep counting up, counting up, counting up, going here, going here, and ah, here's shop 19. It was exactly opposite of where I was standing. Maybe a good way to number it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so the numbers would be closer together. That's just my personal opinion. Now, the nice thing about a question like this, folk, is when they ask you this type of question, you can answer, yeah, I think it's a fantastic way of numbering it, or you know what, I don't think it's a nice way of numbering. But as long as you can justify your answer. So I'm looking at this and saying, I don't like it. And this is the reason I don't like it. Somebody else might look at it and say, this is a great way, because look, it's all in order. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. How wonderful is that? Okay, you get the idea? So I can have different answers for this type of question as long as I can justify what I'm saying. Okay, my next plan we're going to look at is that of a housing plan. Now consider the following plan which illustrates the layout of a particular home. So here is a layout of a home. You can see it's got one, two, three, four bedrooms. There's a living area. It's got a little bathroom. It's got a kitchen. It looks like a little laundry or scullery area. Okay, um, so a nice little four bedroom home. But there are going to be some questions on it, and let's see if we can answer these. How many bedrooms does this house have? We've already said it's got four. What do you like about the design of this house? And what do you not like about the design of this house? Again, folks, this is a nice type of question because there's so many different variations of answers. But again, the marks don't come in the answers, they come in the justification. So when I look at this, I'm going to say the thing I like about this house is that it's got four bedrooms. And because it's got four bedrooms, it can actually accommodate a nice sized family. Okay. The other thing I like about it, there seems to be like an open plan area. You can see there's a wall over here, but here there is no wall. So it's like an open plan area. I like that because while mom's cooking in the uh, kitchen, she can keep an eye on the kids. Or while dad's cooking in the kitchen, he can keep an eye on what's going on, on the, in the TV, which is in the living room. Okay. What don't I like about this plan. The first thing I don't like is this, that it only has one bathroom. And to accommodate four bedrooms with one bathroom could be a little chaotic. And the other thing is this, for bedrooms three and four, for the people staying in bedroom three and four, they got to walk past the kitchen, through the living room, into the privacy of bedroom one and two to get to the bathroom. Okay. The other thing I don't like about it is that the bath and the toilet and the shower are all in one room. That means while someone's having a bath or while someone's having a shower, nobody can use the actual toilet, which is a little bit horrible. Okay. You get the idea? Right. Another thing you might say you like about this house is that it's got a little scullery or a little laundry area where you can uh, put your washing machine, where you can wash some clothes, etc. Okay. Now, I'm going to look at this plan. Here's another plan of a house and it's done a little bit differently. It's done differently in the sense that there's a lot more color and it also shows us where the furniture all goes. So my questions, or the questions we have is, first of all, how many bedrooms 
does this house have? What do you like about this plan? And also then, what don't you like about this house plan? Okay, so how many bedrooms does this house actually have? So when I look at it, I can see I've got a master bedroom, I've got a bedroom number two, and a bedroom number three. In other words, this house has three bedrooms. What do I like about this house? Well, when I look at it, the first thing I do like is this, that the master bedroom has its own bathroom, okay? Um, it's got a lovely big garage. You can fit three cars in, and even if you've got one car, you've got space to put in a little table tennis um, or a little snooker table, or kids can play around, put in a basketball, little net, have a bit of fun area. In fact, because it's so big, you could actually make this like a teenager pad. Put in a bit of furniture here, put an extra TV, and that's just for teenagers to hang around. A no zone for mom and dad. Okay, and that's if you've got one car. If you've got lots of cars, well, cool, you'll do that. All right. The other thing I like about this house is that these bedrooms are serviced by a separate bathroom. In other words, they don't have to go all the way through the main bedroom to get to a bathroom. You've got your own bedroom uh, bathroom over here. Lovely kitchen area, nice dining area, and a lovely little family area. And I also like the fact that there's a separate living area. And that's kind of nice. If you've got teenagers coming over and you've got a whole lot of friends and uh, you've also got mom and dad and some other grown-ups, you can stuff the grown-ups in one lounge and you can have the other lounge if you haven't made that into a teenage pad. Okay, and it's just a kind of nice while mom or dad are sitting here cooking away that they can actually have contact with people who are relaxing in their living room. What don't I like about this plan? What I don't like about this plan are these poor people who live in this bedroom right over here. Okay, bedroom number two. Bedroom number two, if you wake up in the middle of the night and you need to go to the bathroom, you've got to get out, walk past the living room, say how's it to everyone while you're in your pajamas, keep going past bedroom number one and into the bathroom. It would have been kind of nice if there was a bathroom close by for bedroom two. And please take note, it wouldn't be good for these people to go through the main bedroom into that bathroom. They would have to use that bathroom over there. The other thing I don't know if I like about this house is the location of the laundry. If you look at the location of the laundry, the laundry is like close to the living room and very close to these two bathrooms. And in a laundry, you have a washing machine and you also have a tumble dryer. Imagine that going on the whole time while you are trying to sleep okay or just having that noise while you in your room trying to study that go, 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 as your washing is being washed so maybe that's not the best place for a laundry you get the idea okay so we've answered a whole lot of those questions we have got more examples um, of different types of um, plans but again guys you can find these in your book, Mind the Gap. All right, let's just quickly uh, summarize what we've done in this session because time's gone rather quickly. In the segment, we covered the following. We have looked at various plans and we've also analyzed these plans. We're going to take a break and I'm sure I'll see you shortly. Cheers. <music>